Since we have seen the Auror tool flow in Quartus, now let's look at the options, some of the options in detail. So this tutorial, I would like to concentrate on the synthesis portion. So synthesis basically takes your Verilog or any HDL description and converts it into a Netlist format, uh, which uses the primitives available in that particular technology for implementing that circuit. So when we are talking about FPGs, when we are talking about uh, Intel FPGs, the primitives which will be used for implementing your circuits will be basically lookup tables and flip-flops. Of course, in addition to that, uh, these FPGs, they have small uh, macros, other hardware blocks uh, called the block memories and the DSPs. So for this example, uh, I would like to build a random access memory, RAM, inside the FPGA. So we have already designed it as well as simulated it sometime back during our tutorial on random access memory. So I am planning to reuse the same uh, weight log design here. So I'll start a new project. And just uh, let's call it simply RAM. And the top module name, let's keep it as RAM itself. Uh, I just wanted to show you that you can add an existing weight log file to the project. So when you come to this page, you can just go and browse and find your video code uh, that time it was saved here ram.v i'm directly adding that to my project and you can just start your project okay other steps are exactly same so if you have more than one file of course you can add all of them at this point we have added only synthesizable code uh, but we'll be adding test changes also later so that we can initialize a simulation from Quartus itself. So once you have added it, you can see that file under files here. Instead of hierarchy, you can choose files and you can double click and open it. Or in hierarchy also, when you double click, if the names are matching between the module name and the name here, it will automatically open. So anyway, this was our code. This is a parameterized RAM. Uh, you could configure the width as well as depth here. At the top, so as of now, it is configured for a width of 16, both uh, read and write, and the total depth is 1024. So let's go ahead and synthesize it and find out how Quartus interprets this memory. So again, uh, as I mentioned, one easy way for building memory is you have a bunch of flip-flops. Okay? So for each row in the RAM, you can have flip-flops whose number equal to the width. So I can have 16 flip-flops in one row, like that, uh, 1024 rows. Then I will have some input logic to choose a particular row when I want to write to a particular address. Same way I will have some output multiplexer which will be choosing one particular row when I want to read from a particular row. Okay, so that's one way of implementing it. Let's see what quarters uh, identified from our code. So again, I'm going to use the Netlist viewer to find it out. So when I go to the RTL viewer, okay, this is what I'm seeing. Uh, you can see like uh, he has created a block here and he's calling it synchron, which stands for synchronous RAM. So he automatically identified I have a synchronous RAM in my design. It is not being identified uh, from the name of the module. You can call your RAM by whatever name you want, but from your coding style, uh, from your inference style, he automatically detected uh, the recess synchronous RAM. And you can see the port names of this RAM is not exactly matching with the names that we have used. Okay, he has a clock, of course. And this guy, he has a reset signal, you can see here. But in our design, uh, there is no reset. Uh, if you see here, we don't have a reset. So what he did is the reset is permanently grounded here. Then there is a data in, we are calling it write data. Then there is an enable bit here. So basically, if you want to write, if you want to enable the RAM, this bit should be also made one. That is his interpretation for this synchronous RAM. We are not using it. So he permanently made it one so that the RAM is always enabled. Then we have read address uh, that he is also calling read address. We have write address. Uh, he is also calling write address. We have write enable like this. And this is his write enable port. And he automatically mapped them. One interesting thing, at the output, you can see the data out of this synchronous RAM. It is going to a bunch of flip-flops there, uh, actually 16 of them. And you can again see he grounded all the reset of those flip-flops. That means they are never resetted. They are working on the same clock, uh, this guy as well as this guy. His output he is calling as read data. Why that happened? Again, if you look at our code, 
our read data uh, it is a synchronous logic okay the read data is going to come only on the post edge of the clock so basically this synchronous ram the input works on a clock but the output is like a combinational logic as soon as you place the read, read address here uh, the read data will be coming here but because of our coding style we want the output only after a clock signal uh, that means one clock read latency he put a bunch of flip-flops here to match with our description so if you go here and instead of this always block if you simply make it a sign here and change the assignment operator and remove this reg from here and synthesize again and look at the RTL viewer let's see what comes out okay so here you can see those bunch of flip-flops they have gone okay so it's exactly matching with whatever we described so the output is more like a combinational circuit now let's go back and put it back okay so that's about RTL viewer so RTL viewer basically shows what the uh, software found from your weblog description it's a generic uh, netlist viewer it shows the generic implementation of the circuit so quartus he has a concept of memory that's why he directly instantiated a memory block there instead of showing individual flip-flops and he is saying like he is going to use the so-called memory block to implement our ram now if you go to technology map he will exactly show uh, what kind of primitives available inside this particular FPGA we are using Cyclone 5 FPGA so what particular primitives will be used for implementing our memory so this we have seen before so he puts buffers on all inputs and output in addition to that okay you can see a block here called the alt sync ram okay so the name is again coming from the Altera era uh, which stands for Altera synchronous ram that is this alt sync ram so he is saying like he is going to use this block to implement our logic you can expand it and when you expand it inside uh, you can see a lot of small blocks so each of them is actually representing a small memory block inside the FPGA okay so again at this point also it is uh, more or less generic when we go for fitters uh, you will have a better idea like how exactly it will be built so from the RTL at least the difference here is this is giving more information uh, regarding how it will be implemented on the particular target FPGA so basically he is showing the buffers there and he is also showing this uh, small memory blocks here one interesting thing that you will notice here is there is no more those output flip flops in the RTL viewer what you saw was there is a single memory block and its output is going to a bunch of flip-flop because the primitive used in RTL viewer is a synchronous RAM whose output is not registered but when we went to the technology viewer this representation is more closer to the actual implementation and there you won't see those flip-flops at the output here because the actual small memory blocks used inside Cyclone FPGAs they have registers built into the memory block itself that means these outputs are directly registered that's why those additional registers vanished okay so again uh, this we develop as we have more experience uh, how to interpret these things now I wanted to show you one thing so once you finish your analysis and synthesis here on the main window you will see the report uh, the flow summary and there you can have information like how many pins of the FPGA will be used by your design how many ALMs so called ALMs adaptive logic modules will be used how many DSPs will be used all the information so if you see here it is showing like it will use 54 pins uh, because as far as he is concerned this is the topmost module so all the signals here they will be finally connected to some pins so if you count the number of pins here that will be uh, 54 and here you can see total block memory bits used will be 16384 and you can calculate like how much memory will be taken by a 16 wide 1024 deep memory and it might be matching uh, with this and adaptive logic module it is not available at this time uh, we are not using any registers additional registers because as I mentioned the memory 
blocks available inside the FPGA, it itself has these uh, registries at the output. So we are not using any additional registries. And we are not using any DSPs, we are not using any PLLs or DLLs or any of these specialized hardware blocks. I have converted the output again into combinational and let's look at the technology view after this modification. Now in the technology view, you will no longer see those memory blocks. Instead, you are seeing individual flip-flops and lookup tables. Okay, so what just happened? So as I said before, the memory blocks, they have registered output. But now your code says your output shouldn't be registered. Okay, so this is more like a combinational logic. Because of this, he is not able to use those built-in memory blocks to build this RAM. So this basically shows your coding style greatly affects uh, what kind of hardware will be getting implemented inside FPGA. And here again, if you look at the compilation report, uh, you will see like now the total block memory bits that became zero instead of the total number of registers that became 16,384. So it is very important uh, how you write your code um, and practically using block memory it will give better performance in terms of uh, clock frequency compared to building memory using these registers and lookup table which we usually call as uh, distributed RAM and if you are using memory block we call it as uh, block RAM. And let me put back everything okay so in addition to your coding style the another thing that affects what kind of hardware or how the hardware will be implemented is the options that you specify till now we are working with the default options for synthesis uh, implementation everything but if you wish you can go ahead and change the options okay so the options are available under settings again and there there is this option compiler settings below that we have specific options for VHDL and Wedlock which basically says like which version of Wedlock uh, we are using we are using Wedlock 2001 which is a more recent version uh, this supports system Wedlock also uh, quarters but we are sticking with Wedlock 2001 but the interesting thing is under compiler setting so there you can see advanced settings for synthesis now there are again a lot of options here and you will learn these options only by trying them out okay what is the effect of changing them uh, for example uh, here there is an option like okay auto ram replacement okay so what each option does he will show here so it basically says allows the compiler to find a set of registers and logic that can be replaced with the alt sync ram or the lpm ram dp mega function turning on this option may change the functionality of the design okay so by default this is on and from the description you can actually find out our verilog description of the ram was actually replaced by a block ram inside the fpga because he found like this description is matching the description of a ram and he replaced our description with a memory block suppose if you turn it off here and if you synthesize again and go to the technology map you will no longer find those memory blocks okay again remember i have changed my code so output is also synchronized in the previous case if this output was synchronized it was directly using uh, memory blocks to build our block ram but now it is not the case so he again built the block ram using the distributed uh, ram using lats and flip flop because in the synthesis i told like uh, do not replace the inference of a ram in my code with an actual uh, block ram so this shows that okay choosing the synthesis option and filter options also we will see later they are very important now uh, each relevant information each relevant settings there uh, we will discuss later also when we are discussing specific topics about uh, especially optimization how we can improve the performance in terms of clock how we can improve the performance in, in terms of resource utilization of our consumption we'll be discussing about the settings but i will encourage you to change those settings there and observe what kind of difference is coming in the implemented circuit so the easiest way is you change the setting there you do a resynthesis look at the technology map again here you can see this technology map view is quite large now because he is using individual LUTs and flip-flops here it is 166 pages uh, large now okay so you can see the effect there 
Also, you have to look at this compilation report and see how this resource utilization is changing based on the settings that you put there. Some settings it won't have any effect because that setting has no effect on the particular circuit that you have described. But in certain cases, uh, but in many cases, uh, there will be effect. Okay, so that's it in this tutorial. Uh, we will discuss more about quarters in the next tutorial. Thank you.